Um, so today we're dealing with slope intercept form. Okay. Your first vocabulary is parent function. And we've talked about parent functions before. Parent function is the simplest version of an equation. Simplest form of a particular type of equation. That's what a parent function is. And then we do stuff to it to move them, change them. So like for parabolas, the simplest form is x squared, y equals x squared. But today we are dealing with specifically linear equations. So linear equations, an equation that models linear situation, straight line, linear straight lines, that's what you're dealing with in linear equations. Parent functions is y equals x. That is the parent function for linear equations. This is the simplest version of a linear equation. We are going to do things to that. Variables will only be raised to the power of 1. No squares, no square roots, no absolute values. You have one or two variables, no exponents, no goofy things going on. That will be a linear equation for you. Okay. Um, we didn't talk about it specifically yesterday. We did talk about zero slope, sorry, zero slope equations and equations with undefined slopes. Zero slope equations are y equals a particular number with no x. Undefined ones are x equals a particular value with no y. Your horizontal and vertical have one variable y or x, but not both of them. If it has both, it will not be a vertical or horizontal. It will be at some angle. Okay. Now, the y-intercept, which will be an important concept we're dealing with today. The graph is... The y-intercept of a graph is the x is the y-coordinate where the graph crosses the y-axis, the y-intercept, where the line intercepts the y-axis. So you have your y-axis, the line crosses it somewhere, the place where that line crosses is the y-intercept. That will be a very important part of our graphing today. You're going to do a lot of graphing. The y-intercept is extremely important when it comes to the graphing portions. Okay. For some reason, don't know why, we use the letter B to stand for our y-intercept. We use M for slope, B for y-intercept. I don't know why. I heard a story once why, it's wrong. No, really, it's, it's, there was a long time where, ooh, this is where the M came from, and this is where the B, they don't, they, no, no, it's completely false. It's like one of those internet stories, it's a bunch of crap. Well, how do you know if you don't know where things came from? Yeah. Because we do know where things don't come from. Thank you. Okay. Now, slope-intercept form of the equation. This is one type of linear equation, slope-intercept. It is the most common type. Y equals mx plus b, where m is your slope and b is your y Intercept, slope intercept. The y and the x do not change. The m and the b are what changes it. The rest of it stays the same. Y equals mx plus b. You will hear that. Y equals mx plus b all the time. I have it up on here. I also have our slope formula up on the board that we did yesterday. So we're going to use that again today. Okay. But slope intercept form, y equals mx plus b. M is your slope. B is your y-intercept. The M and the B is what changes. The X and the Ys do not change okay, when we're writing the equation. Now, here's an example. Okay. Y equals negative 2 thirds X plus 4. That is an example equation. That is actually the equation that is graphed there right now. Your Y-intercept, your B, is 4. That's where it crosses the x, the y-axis. That's where they are connected. 
whatever is plus or minus is where it crosses the y-axis. That's your y-intercept. Plus 4, it crosses at 4. Okay. And then you have your slope. And this equation is negative 2 thirds. Our slope of our line. We pick another point on here. And we do our slope. We go over 3 and down 2. Remember our slope is our rise over our run. Negative 2 over 3. Negative 2 thirds. And that is how the equation itself is in. Okay, what is our slope? What is our y intercept? Those are the parts of the graph. The slope of the line, where it crosses the y axis. Questions? Okay, now let's start doing some practice problems with this. Okay, identifying the slope and the y-intercept. Going, there it is, does not count. Okay. We're not looking for Waldo. We're looking for particular numeric values. We need to state those particular numeric values. Remember, slope-intercept form. We want to identify our slope. We want to identify our intercept. Our slope is what... How many x's do we have? Five. We have five x. Our slope is five. So our slope of our line is five. What's our y-intercept? Negative two, because it's minus two. So whatever we are adding or subtracting, that's our y-intercept. Whatever we have in front of the x, how many ever x's we have, that's our slope. They're easy to identify. You have to be able to identify them. Or you can't graph them when you have an equation like this. That's your first step. So, and the next one, what's my slope? Negative 3. I have negative 3x's, so I have negative 3. What's my y-intercept? 1. Easy peasy. Next one, what's our slope? One fourth, because we have one fourth x. And here's a tricky problem. What's our y intercept? Zero. Who said zero? Because if we don't have anything, remember, mathematicians are lazy. We don't write plus zero, because adding zero to something does not change it. So why would we write plus zero? It's like why put a one in front of the x? We don't write one x, because if you have x by itself, how many you have? You have one. Putting the one in front is redundant. Writing plus zero is redundant because if you're not adding anything, you don't need to put it there. But it is implied. If you don't have anything else after the x, your y-intercept is zero because technically we are still adding something. We're adding zero. So our y-intercept would be zero. That one would go through the origin. Okay? Now... <clears throat> Writing the equations of the line. Y equals mx plus b form. This is what we're doing. What we need to do is figure out the slope and figure out the intercept and plug them in accordingly. So if I look at this equation, look at my information. What is the equation of the line with slope negative 4 fifths and y intercept 7? It tells me right here. That means that my slope, my m, is negative 4 fifths. Because it tells me that. And my says my y-intercept is 7. Ooh, y-intercept. Ooh, that's b. b equals 7. Those are the two things I need to know to be able to write my equation. And then you fill it in. The m and the b, everything else is the same. So I get y equals... Negative 4 fifths x plus 7. Okay, my slope times x plus 7. Easy peasy. Next one's a little more difficult. The easy part to do first on this one is what's my y intercept? 
where does that graph, where does this graph cross the y-axis? Negative 2. So my b equals negative 2. Now, yesterday, when we were doing this, we figured out our slope. What do you do to find the slope from a graph? You find two points. There's one, there's another one, and you figure out your rise and run from that. So it goes over one and up two. So my slope is my rise, which is two, over my run, which is one. Can I simplify that? It's two. So now I do what I just got done doing in the previous problem. My slope and my intercept, plug them into the equation. So I get y equals what? 2x two. Two minus 2. 2 from the m minus 2 from the b. These are some of the easiest equations to write. They really are. But don't worry. It'll get hard. Yay. Questions so far? Questions so far? Now's when it gets hard. Yeah, the hardest problem number four, this is the hardest example we have. This is the hardest problem we're going to be dealing with today. It's the most difficult part of the equation. Okay. So what equi right? It says what equation in slope intercept form represents the line that passes through the points to one and five negative eight. So what do I need to be able to do right the equation in slope intercept form? I need the slope. I need the y-intercept. Do I did they give me the slope? Did they give me the y-intercept? No, I have to figure them out. Now yesterday we were finding the slope. So the first step is what we were doing in here yesterday. Take those two points, find the slope. Y1, I'm sorry, x1, y1, x2, y2, and plug them into the equation. Your slope equals negative 8 minus 1 over 5 minus 2. Change y over change next. So this is what we were doing yesterday. This is the formula. I still have it up here on the board. This is what we were doing in here yesterday. Finding the slope. That's your first step. Okay. Negative 9 over 3, which is negative 3. So our slope is negative 3. Okay. The y-intercept is a little harder to find. T is a little harder to find. It's not bad, but it's a little more complicated. Uh, actually, not really, but it's, it's something we haven't done yet. But it really isn't hard. We have an x and a y. We also have another x and a y, and we have our slope. For the equation, y equals mx plus b. We have a y, we have an m, we have an x. This is what we need to find. Plug in what we know. Now, I have two xy coordinates to choose from. I can use either xy coordinate. I can either use the point 2, 1 or the point 5, negative 8. Which one do you think would be easier to use? 2, 1. Two reasons why. One, this has a negative in it. I don't want to mess with negatives if I don't have to mess with negatives. And 2 and 1 are a little bit smaller and easier to deal with than 5 and 8. Not a lot, but a little bit. But I'll pick the easier if I have a choice. So here's what you do. You take this xy coordinate, and you take this slope, and plug them into there to solve for b. y is 1 equals our slope negative 3 times our x-coordinate 2 plus b. Y coordinate equals slope times X coordinate plus B. Let's solve that equation for B. We did this. We did this a long time ago. 
solving for a variable. First step, multiply the negative 3 into 2. 1 equals negative 6 plus b. Now what do I do? Add 6 to both sides. So b is 7. Like I said, this is the hardest one you're going to do with the most work. It's not difficult. It's got a lot of work involved in it. Several steps to get there. First, find the slope. Second, figure out what your B is. And now I do have one more step. I actually have to write my equation. Y equals MX plus B. I need to do this. Y equals... Negative 3 times x plus 7. It's not pretty. Yeah, so what? Questions. I said that's probably the most difficult thing you'll be doing today. How many questions is there? A gazillion. Really? Yeah. Okay, so graphing a linear equation. Got to graph the line y equals 2x minus 1. First step you do, identify your slope and identify your y-intercept. What's my slope? What's my m? My m is 2. Is that a fraction? No. If it's not a fraction, make it a fraction. You need to have it as a fraction for graphing. How do I make 2 into a fraction? Put it over 1. If your slope is not a fraction, make it a fraction. You need to do that. Second part, what's my B? Negative 1. Watch your negatives and positives. Once you've done that, graphing is fairly easy. Your first, your first step, put a dot on negative 1 on the y-axis, your y-intercept. Y-axis, my y-intercept is negative 1. I put a dot on negative 1 where my b is. Okay, that's your first step. Whatever your b is, put a dot on that on the y-axis. Second step, from that point... Do your slope. Remember slope is rise over run. So from this point, I go up to and over one. Gives me a second dot. Up to, over one, rise over run. Got two dots. My line goes through those two dots. That's it. Graphing from MX plus B is easy. Find the y-intercept, the B, plot that point. Take your slope, make sure it's a fraction, and go from there. Okay, you're going to do a lot of graphing. you got a bunch of graphs you got to do today. Jeez. Sorry, I was just stretching. Okay, uno mas. One more. So in this one, we first have to write the equation and then graph the equation. So plumber charges a $65 fee for the repair plus $35 per hour. Write an equation to model the total cost Y of the repair that it takes X hours and then graph it. So I have to have two parts. I have to have my M and I have to have my B. I have two numbers to choose from. $65 and $35 per hour. You may remember from yesterday, we talked about slope being rate of change, how fast something is changing. Which one of those is our slope? Which one of those measures how fast it's changing? Yeah, the per hour part, $35 per hour. 
And you see per hour, this is dollars per hour. That's a rate. And your slope is a rate. And so that must mean that our y-intercept would be $65, which is they pay $65 for a repair plus $35 an hour on top of that. $65 for showing up, and then $35 an hour on top of showing up. Okay. Now, our slope, we need to make it into a fraction for graphing purposes. Although I didn't, I skipped, I skipped part of it, didn't I? Yeah. What did I need to do? I need to write the equation first. But that's easy. mx plus b, y equals 35x plus 65. There's one part. Second part is graphing. So I have, I have my y-intercept is 65. Go over to the graph. I don't have exactly 65. You do the best you can. From that point, I do my rise and run. If I take, so I need to move up 35 from that point. I take 65 and add 35 to it, I get 100. So I go up to 100, and then I go over 1. And yes, that is 35 and 1. Look at the scales. They're not the same. So that is 35 and 1. There's my second point. And there's my graph. Questions? Okay.